All right, so we're doing some videos here on interview questions that could be asked when applying for a job as a Go programmer. And so we're just going through different questions to build our skill set. And if you're a business or working at a business or an organization and you, need, and you need questions to ask Go developers when you're looking for a Go developer or software engineer or programmer, you can find all these questions I put together at my GitHub repo. So my user account is goes to 11. The repo is learn to code Go version 3. And uh, that's the repo for this course that I created. You could get to it by clicking on that or by just coming here to Udemy, Todd McLeod, and there's the course right there. And uh, in this repo, this is all the code used in the course. If you wanna see the outline for the course, I'll link that in the description of this video down below. And that includes links to a lot of uh, code samples on the Go Playground, so I could help you learn Go and master Go. Uh, but here is all the code used in the course. Anything over 000, is code for the course. 000 is code that I just use to build stuff, including these interview questions right here. And I build stuff and try stuff out in the triple zero folders. And so that's where all the interview questions are located. Okay, that said, for this interview question for this video, uh, we have a little bit of a code challenge here, and I want you to look at this code. Let me just move this over. I want you to look at this code, and I want you to uh, determine what this code will print. So go ahead and pause this video and do this hands-on exercise and, uh, and answer this question. When you're all done, unpause the video, and then I'll tell you my solution, which I'm going to do right now. All right, so it's going to make, I'm just going to walk through this code, and a good way to sort of answer questions when you're in an interview is to use your verbal skills and let the people who are interviewing you know how you think. <laughs> Don't just sit there silently and try to determine the answer and get caught into, you know, your own thoughts and things like that. Like, just talk to people and say, well, let's analyze this code. Let's see what it's doing. All programs in the Go programming language start in the funk main. First thing we're doing is we're making a, a slice of string and we're saying length and cap to five and then we're using a short declaration operator to assign that to sports. Like if you just start talking through the code, they're like, cool, this person has some understanding, right? You're naming the points. And then we're assigning elements to index positions in that slice, zero, one, two, three, four, and we're assigning these strings. That all looks good. And then what we're doing here is we're slicing a slice. And this is something that not a lot of people see is this third element in slicing a slice. And so this third element right here can help you set on the slice. So this is going to set which values, right? You're going from uh, index position one uh, all the way up to three, but not including three. So you're doing surf and swim. And then this is going to set how far the length and the cap should be on that slice. And so that allows you to have both your length and your cap to be limited. And, uh, and so we're going from one to here to three on that to set our capacity. And then that's also our length is going to be two. So our capacity is going to be two. So we're going from uh, length and capacity of two. Cool. And then we're changing something at index position zero. Uh-oh. <laughs> right? Well, a slice... Is a, is a data structure, it's a three word data structure, and it has a pointer to an underlying array, a length and a cap as the three words. And so this slice right here, right, we just kind of created a slice from this other slice, but they're both pointing to the same underlying array. So as we change a value in this slice that we just created through slicing, right, as we change that, it's gonna change the value stored in the underlying array. All right, interesting, and now we're gonna print out sports and we're gonna print out XS. And so when we print out sports, we're gonna come down here, what's gonna print, that's the question that's being asked here. And what's gonna print is we're gonna get the length and the cap of, of uh, sports. And the length of the cap of sports is going to be five, that was set right there. And there's nothing else that occurred to say, hey, it needs to be bigger than that. And so we never like appended or needed to grow the capacity by adding something to the length. So we're gonna get five for the length and the cap. And then we're also gonna range over uh, sports, and as we range over sports, what we're gonna see is we're going to see uh, ski, surf, swim, sail, sumo, wrestling, except for at index position zero for sports, and index position, or zero, index position zero for XS. And index position zero for XS is at one. So it's going to be ski, change, swim, sail, sumo, wrestling. That's what we're gonna print when we print sports. And then when we print XS, we're gonna get a length and a cap of two, because that's what we set here. And then as we range over that, right, as we look at the, the values stored in those index positions, what we're going to see is we're going to see, uh, we're going to see that, you know, the, the first position is gonna be changed and then the second position is going to be swim, right? And so that's what we're gonna see. And then the addresses that we're going to see printed here 
is that they're going to have the same addresses, right? These are the addresses of the values in that array. And uh, like, what are they pointing towards? Like, what's that address, right? That's going to be the same addresses in both sports and XS because they're pointing towards the same underlying array. So when we print all of that out, I'm gonna come over here and I'm in, which, which one am I in? I'm in, uh, do, 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 where am I? Oh, I, I'm not in any of this. So I have to actually, oh, well, the Go Playground is where I have that running. Okay, here we go. So when I print all this out, you can see this is the same code here. And when I print all this out, I get ski, change, swim, sail, sumo, wrestling. And then I get changed and I get swim. And, uh, and we have length capacity five and length capacity two. And then you can see the same addresses here. That one is right there is the same. And this one right there is the same. So that's my answer for this question. Of course, I've had an advantage. <laughs> I've thought about this. I put this solution together. But now you're thinking about it. And so you're going to have an advantage. And you're starting to put the solution together. So when you go into the interview, you're going to do a better job. And if you're asking people these questions, you'll kind of know what to look for. Plus, you learned a really valuable skill here that when you're kind of, you know, working on a solution in a job interview and people are there waiting or kind of looking, they're looking to see how you think. So speak out loud, think out loud and share with them your thoughts as you're developing it. All right, that's my solution to this hands-on exercise.